session will be back on the page, along with any links and URLs used in the session. So we're going to stop this today by another project from yesterday, our uh, endpoint, and we'll see how we can send back with YAML documentation, and how we can use the Swaggy UI to go around that documentation. We're then going to take a look at some interoperability options, connecting to IMS services using HTML and JavaScript, and doing the same using Visual Studio and C-Sharp. Then adding my documentation to include using Swagger code gen for this session to demonstrate how to generate SDKs for JavaScript and C-Sharp using an automated tool. Unfortunately, we've got technical difficulties working with that tool, I won't be able to prepare that for this demonstration today. Once I've resolved the technical issues, I will of course update the GitHub being buffers for this session. This step, what we're going to do today is I'll show you how to build these SDKs manually for JavaScript and for C-Sharp. So we're going to open up our endpoint project from yesterday, and we'll take a look at how we add YAML documentation to it. So we're going to add the YAML documentation to our endpoint. YAML is a documentation format that is a subset of JSON, so it's a human-readable format. Uh, it effectively forms the same function for JSON REST services as WISPL documents here for SOAP services that you're familiar with us. So effectively, it describes each of the available endpoints and method calls in a human-readable and machine-readable way. So we're going to check out the WISPL page on YAML, and then to which you'll find it on Blockbuster's coming to this session. So we're using a tool called Swaggy UI. Again, there's a link on the blog for this. This is available over on GitHub. And this is a tool that allows you to open up, read, and browse the, uh, the YAML document, which was generated by YAML. So we're going to go ahead and download this as a zip file. And once I have that downloaded, I'm going to go ahead and open up my download folder, everybody. And I'll extract the zip into a new folder. Okay, within that folder, I'm going to go ahead and browse in and go to the disk directory. And within here, we have index.html. So if I open that up, that's going to open a browser window onto the Swaggy UI, which is the documentation viewer. I'm going to go ahead and start up my DNS server without our endpoint in it. And the reason that I haven't added YAML documentation has to our endpoint yet, which will cause the, uh, the YAML document to fail. Uh, but at the moment, let's go ahead and open up in a web browser. We can see local for 38 version. I'm going to change this to API, and that will send back a uh, GCS that describes the available API documentation. And we're interested, as I said, in the YAML, so that's API doc.yaml. I'm going to go ahead and add that to the end of my URL. And this is back the YAML documentation for the DNS server. It's quite a lengthy document already with nothing stored in the server, and that's because it's providing all the existing functionality of that server in the document. So I'm going to take this document link and say copy and bring that over into Swaggy UI. Now, as you here, when I click on Explore, it's going to fail to read that document. Actually, it hasn't failed to see it. Uh, but if I'm not system, it does have to fail. And the reason is on because we're not hosting the Swaggy UI. So what I've done is I've installed an extension into my Chrome browser. The extension is called Allow Control, Allow Origin. And that gives you this little uh, icon button up here in the browser. If you find that when you try to explore the YAML document, it doesn't work, then you can use this plugin to enable or disable and re-enable cross-origin resource sharing. And the reason for this is that the domain, the local host, is not the same domain as index is coming from because of the browsing compiler. So the browser security takes it and prevents you from reading the document. Okay, so having looked at document, we can see here that we have all the existing endpoints for the EMS server. So we've got our API documentation, any edge modules we have installed, groups, users, push notifications, and so on. We drag this one side for a moment, and we'll put some documentation tags into our code. Okay, so our endpoint here, we have a get method which returns all records of the employee database table, and we have get item which returns a single row. Now, we need to add some decorations to these, and we're going to start by adding a uh, copy paste in the kind of empty tags, but we're going to add some decorations to the get method. We need two tags here, endpoint request summary, and we need to add details. We want to make sure these tags can be found on the documentation that they've got there with the and again, we'll leave to the documentation in the blog post. For this session. So, let's look at what I'm here. Well, the endpoint request summary starts with this button right here, which is actually called the tag. And what this means is, where is the endpoint with regards to the server? So, when I put the URL into my browser and I put the local host I can force my employee, and that's why I put the employee here as a tag. The next right here is a summary, so a brief description of what this endpoint uh, function is going to do. So, I'm going to get all records saying this is going to return all records. We're going to get another descriptive uh, entry here, so this is called description, and we're going to get the return for all employee records or something more with more detail. We're going to get this tag here for producers, and this is saying, what does this endpoint when I call it? What does it produce? Well, it's going to produce JSON tags because we just write uh, JSON data coming out of DB Select. So I'm going to pass back in my type for uh, application JSON. And then this final tag here is what do we consume? This is another my type, saying what type of data do we get when the request is made? Well, this is a get request, and we don't have any parameters, so this is the consuming data that I'm going to leave that blank. It'll actually default to uh, text type, but since there's no text coming in, it's not going to do anything. So that's describing the method. And then you describe the response to this method, we'll send back. And you can send back one of any number of different response codes. So if HTTP has a number of multiple response codes, one of which is 200, 200 means I made a request to the HTTP server and it came back successfully. So 200 is the OK code. So I mean, just to find this method, what happens if everything goes well, you could add in here response details for various error codes, like 500 is server error, for a full page or something. Uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and put the other case of the The next factor of this tag is uh, the case of time that's going to be too low, but it's going to be a So I put in SP array. So I can choose from a number of different options here. I can send back a string, a boolean piece of data, or a and so on. Uh, so in this case, I just send back an array. So, the next script is format. Is if I send back an array, I'm sending back an array of what? I mean, I could send back an integer or a string. So I choose integer or string or byte or one of the other types. But in this case, what I'm sending back is an array, and it's an array of objects. And because objects aren't actually defined as a printed tongue, I'm sending it no. I'm not sending, uh, I'm not sending a, a printed data type return, I'm just sending an object, which is the next parameter. So I'm going to send back an array of objects. But then I need to describe that object. And because it's a single line tag, I don't have any layer to describe it. So what I'm going to do instead is put in this parameter, which is basically reference a description of an employee object. That means I need to define the employee object, so I'm going to do another copy paste again. I'm going to put a constant string, which defines my employee object. I put this anywhere in my code, but I just put it up here at the top for now. So I'm basically saying this is my employee object, and the properties of that object are so I have an employee number, and this type of that uh, property is integer, and the first name, which is a string, and so on. So that's describing the object that I'm sending back. So now I'm going to get to the definition of this employee object. Well, for that, I need another tag. So I'm going to get uh, so I'm going to these tags that are actually just the employee, uh, the person I'm going to get.